Hi, welcome. Welcome to Lee Live. This is Lee from the Ankrum Institute, and I'm going live here on your Wednesday night once a month. This is always, this tends to be. Oh, sorry, get him down. Get him down. Ouch. Get out. Ouch. Oh, I should have fought him there. Get out. He is that. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, and I'm live. I hope there's nobody watching that. <laughs> like, oh, hello. Anyway. So one of the deals is, is that this is that Wednesday night where I am talk about something in the body. And today we picked, today we picked tennis elbow. So pain in the elbow, tennis elbow. And we picked, look at my little pictures here, pain in the thumb. So we've got the thumb right here, pain in the thumb. And you're thinking to yourself, how come she's picking those two structures and how do they relate? So I'll give you a little teeny bit of a story here. So even though I'm probably online by myself right now, and there's probably nobody else with me, but is that the story, this is how the story goes, is that the idea of connecting things in the body and seeing how they relate, I feel so, so lucky because in my um, education career, my osteopathic training, I mean, I had a lot before them, but my osteopathic training was quite amazing. But one of the deals that they did was to teach us how to kind of connect things. Like I can connect your eyelash to the opposite little toe somehow. You know, we had to learn to think that way. I'll give you, an, I'll give you not exactly an example, but tell you sort of how they did this as well. At the end of my third year out of the five years is that the test was, there was a test in front of a jury, first eight hours of written, and then the next day, if you pass the written, you got the jury test. So I had a test, a jury test, and what they did was they had three large bowls, okay, all on a table in front of the jury. And you had to pick, and one bowl had all the techniques in it that were soft tissue. And one bowl had all the techniques that were cranial sacral. These were all learned up to date. And one bowl was all the bony tests, bony treatments. And I just want to tell you something, is that in my week of the hip bone, the ilium, there was 164 pages of treatments. So you got to know that the bowls were full, okay? And you had to pick one piece, one little slip of paper from each bowl, and you looked at them, and so it was a cranial thing, a cranial issue, a soft tissue issue, and a bone issue. And you had to actually get them connected. I mean, you could have something going on with something in the eye orbit to, to your clavicle to something in the fascia that goes around, you know, inside your hip bone. And so you had to learn how to connect those. So I had these five years of deeply, deeply learning how to make the connections between things. So all of that being said, sorry, because I always love to tell stories and digress, is that all of that being said is that I'm connecting the elbow and the thumb. But why is it that you can have pain in both or pain in either one and it can be interrelated? But first I want to talk about the one side, the tennis elbow. So I'm going to grab a couple of my pictures back, okay? And I'm going to look at, we're going to look at the shoulder. So this is the shoulder girdle, okay? And here, let me grab my pen. Whoopsie. And here we have, we have the humerus, which is, this is the ball of the head of my arm, okay? And here's my collarbone. And here's my shoulder blade that you can kind of see through the rib cage. And what the deal is, is that we have, of course, we have all kinds of musculature here, both on the front and the back, okay? We have how these bones, the clavicle, meet the shoulder blade and how the head of your humerus fits into the socket there. And to me, the three of these, the three of these makes that outside shoulder joint-ish kind of thing. But what the deal is, is that you can have pain going down your arm because, and this, I want to tell you how common this is. This is so common, I find it, if I worked on 10 people in a day, I would find it in at least nine of them. Some, you know, some gradation of it. Not everybody has it so bad that they can't lift their arm, but if the clavicle actually goes into the wrong position and it 
oftentimes slips backwards posterior and the head of your humerus actually kind of rotates forward. And what happens is, is then you have wrong relationship of all of your arm being able to lift weight or do things. And where does the pain often comes out? Sometimes the pain comes out in the shoulder itself and sometimes the pain actually comes out in the elbow like it goes down and how it goes down is oh oh i don't actually have a picture of the arm muscles but let's talk about them so in front we have bicep and we have deeper muscles these are, i'm just going to tell you your two basics your biceps and your triceps and what you have is these attaching all around you have these attaching in i'm not going to go through everything where everything attaches but you have them attaching up here and they go down the arm and what they do is in order to make the arm the lower arm move they contract so they have to ooh, I'm, i know how this looks i have to show it to you is they actually cross they actually cross the elbow joint you know the tricep comes around the back side of your arm and the bicep comes as we know in the front so when you have misalignments within the shoulder girdle itself what you have is muscles the muscles are not the beginning part of the problem they become the contracted later part of the problem so always doing something that actually has us um, doing only range of motion and doing things that are only about, <clears throat> excuse me, getting the soft tissue moving is a bit problematic because what it's not doing is it's not addressing what's happening in the shoulder girdle that's translating itself down and into the elbow. Now the interesting thing, let me grab this, let me grab this picture of some muscles here. Uh, hopefully I'm going to hold, ooh, Sorry about that. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so here is my scapula right here, okay? And on it, I wrote a post a couple of weeks ago about the um, infraspinatus and how the pain from infraspinatus, this muscle right in here on the shoulder blade, on your back of your shoulder blade, goes down into, it will go into your it will go into your shoulder and then it goes down your arm and it can go into your elbow. So once again, you can get elbow pain from mus muscle contraction higher up. There's also this shoulder blade on the front side of it. I'm going to point this out on my other picture. On the front side where you're, you're seeing the shoulder blade through the ribs. So on the front side is a muscle called subscapularis. Subscapularis gets involved in, oh my gosh, so many things. Because you can have subscapularis be the one that can create frozen shoulder. We can have, su so subscapularis, when it contracts, what it does is it sends pain and it can send it down into the forearm and then all the way down into the elbow and then and <clears throat> down the shaft of the humerus. We can have pain anywhere in here, then we can have pain in the elbow, then we can have pain in this part of the forearm often. So we have this sort of system of things that can be coming down, okay, and can come down all the way to the elbow. But let's really get into what is the relationship between elbow and thumb in pain patterns and stuff. This is the really biggie here, in my opinion. And this may be one of the shortest, sweetest little live things I ever do, because you never know about me. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm getting my pictures ready to show you. So here is your forearm, okay? Here's the forearm. And yeah, obviously it's telling you, there's my elbow. It's telling you there's your elbow. I also like to show you how the elbow, I apologize for moving the pictures a lot. So let me just say that here is my humerus coming down and it meets this bone here of my forearm. This is the bone of my forearm. That's my ulna. My ulna actually has the elbow as part of it. So the bone of the elbow is part of this lower arm bone, the ulna. 
<clears throat> they call this part of the elbow the electronon process. It's a big, and you'll notice how the ball of the forearm, of the upper arm, actually fits in to that sort of, sort of cup-like looking piece in the electronon process. So here I have my ulna, and the other bone of my forearm is my radius. This is my radius. And I want you to look that my radius here looks like it is a disc. That's my radius. It looks like a disc. And you can note, I'm point, hey, I'm pointing at the, the, the picture instead of this one. You can notice that in this ulna bone, it also has a notch for this disc of the radius. Hmm, that ulna is a tricky bone, isn't it? You know, most people, I don't know what most people think, but I, I don't let anything not come into my consciousness about all this stuff. I'm thinking all the bones. I'm thinking all the ways they come together. I'm thinking all the soft tissue. I'm thinking all the fascias. So I'm thinking about all of that when I'm looking at things. Okay, so what happens here is that, you know, I, don't, I just don't love this picture, you guys. Even though it has all of that, i got to go back to this other one to show you this. So one of the deals here is, is that why would this be in a disc shape? They wouldn't have this be a disc if there wasn't a reason for it. So what is the reason that I have a disc that's fitting into another bone? Gosh, how do I do that? Why would I have an, a disc that's fitting into another bone? Well, obviously, this disc is going to make some kind of rotational movement. Do you see this? It's a rotational movement. But what is the movement? Hopefully, I can get this into the picture. The movement is, so if my arm's in neutral, what happens with this is that I turn, can turn my palm down, and I can turn my palm up. And that is the rotation of the disc. So I can, hey, hi. I can supinate, which is, which what happens when I supinate, I don't know where I want, I want to use, I don't know what kind of picture I want to use here. Okay, so what happens is when I supinate, here's the radius on top, okay, when I, when this disc rolls, it rolls up and on top of the ulna. So when I turn my hand when I turn my hand up and it rolls, that disc rolls, it rolls up and on top of the ulna. And when I turn my palm down into pronation, supination and pronation, then, yep, you guys got it, it rolls under the radius or towards the bottom. Let's just sort of say that. So what ends up happening here is, is that my radial head, this is the head of the radius, this disc, it rolls down. When I, when I supinate, it rolls up. Here's the deal, you guys. It gets caught all the time. And then what do you got? You got pain in your elbow. When that bone makes that rotation, right? And it, oh my gosh, I don't know why it's so common for that to get stuck. Maybe it's just the nature of something, you know, being, uh, being a disc like that, that it's easy for it to get caught up into there. And it does. I'm telling you, once again, if I had 10 people come, um, come in, I know that 10 people are going to have one of their radiuses stuck up or down. So whenever anybody comes in with any kind of lower arm pain, elbow pain, those kinds of things, I am absolutely looking at the radius and what's the radius doing. So the radius is creating pain here in the elbow. So it'll create pain here in the elbow. What else does it do? It makes you weak. So one of the things is when it gets caught, you get weak. So not only do you have pain in the elbow. So now here's our deal. You have the possibility, I'm getting close, you have the possibility of pain in your elbow coming from my shoulder itself. Misalignments in bones, tensions in within the muscle structure, and it drives down the arm. Now I have a bone that's actually supposed to rotate one way or rotate the other way actually gets stuck. When it does that, then what happens is, is I have a pretty good chance after a while of, of course, the muscles get so contracted and tight. 
and, and what they do is, is that you start to get pain in the elbow. In between these two bones here, in between the ulna and the radius, there are very three layers of thick membrane. And that thick membrane, when the radius gets stuck in whichever position, what it does is it takes those two bones and drives them together. And it's very difficult, pardon me, my nose is running, is that it's very difficult for you to get them. The, the, the object for me is to help the radius go back into its neutral position. So one of the ways I have to do this is, is to try to get into that membrane that's in between the two bones. Very challenging when they're stuck together, when they're stuck together. Because once again, remember when I did the one about plantar fasciitis or something and I talked about the fibula which is the non-weight-bearing bone in your lower leg. And remember how I said there were many roles of the fibula, one of them being a pump? Well, you got the same thing here. Not only is the, are the bones moving like this, because you actually are having, you got the bones moving like that because, you know, I need to have my arm, my hand turned up, or I need my hand turned down for for whatever reason, for driving, for this, for that. But the other thing is, is the movement of the arm is also a pump. It's also a lymphatic pump because remember when I said all this, I hope you remember some of it, is that you've got lymphatic pumping going like up. You want whatever it is, you want lymphatic pumping moving up my arm as well so that I don't get swelling or those kinds of things. So we have that. Okay. So we have that radial head that's up near the elbow having to make that movement. So then what happens, here it is, guys. Here's the next part of this. I know you're going to get this. I know you all can teach this pretty soon after listening. So now we have the radial head, and the radial head is stuck. Okay? And notice that the radial head goes down, and it is the side of the forearm that goes right to the, this is the thumb side, okay? This is the pinky finger side here on the ulna. And one of the things that happens is when this gets stuck, then what happens is it tends to freeze over here down by the hand, by the carpal bones, and the thumb ends up doing all of its action by itself. Because what is supposed to happen is, is that my thumb is an extension of my radius. <gasps> Think about that, guys. My thumb is not a, you know, I mean, we got this great opposable thumb, which allowed us to do, has allowed us to do so many things in, in civilization and getting all advanced and crazy. But at the same time, your thumb is not out here by itself. Because if it was, I mean, they would always break down. Because your thumb is supposed to be an extension of that radius. It's supposed to be an extension. Here's my thumb, and it's an extension of the radius. Much more than the pinky finger and those guys are an extension of the ulna. They're not, it's not as integral. Look at how big the radius gets right here where it meets the carpals. Now, I'm not going to say that it's so big just because it has to help support the thumb, but that's one part of it. That's one part of it. So does this move? Hey, I want you to do this to yourself. I want you, I, let me see how I can show it to you. I want you to go over here and press and see if it moves. If it doesn't move, your thumb's working on its own. You know, that's just a little easy, easy way to test. I do that. I hold a client's hand and then I put my thumbs on the two bones at the wrist and I just try to push down. I'm not trying to push hard. I'm just trying to see if they'll move a little, like just easy move. And I have to say it's quite often that it's not happening. So when the radius is stuck, it quite often translates to the radius being stuck at the end near the distal end, which is near the in the wrist or the proximal end, which is the end up by the elbow. So if I get a stuck radius bone, it can translate into pain in the elbow, pain in the thumb, or feeling like your thumb is overworked. And one of the things that happens when the thumb gets overworked is you'll start to notice somebody will start to look like that. 
When that thumb, it starts to migrate around the inside of the hand, then you know that your radius, your radius bone is not supporting your thumb anymore. And this is how you make the connection between your elbow and your thumb. This is how you do it. This radius bone is actually needs to have its movement pattern, rotation both ways, supinating and, uh, supinating and pronating. It needs to be able to do that. But the other thing, oh, I'm going to tell you this. I got to tell you this so I don't forget, is that the other thing is, is that if you have fallen, if you've fallen, you know, on your hand like this, or there's been some impact in and through you'll lock up your radius you'll lock up you can lock up your ulna too because the, the ulna is supposed to have movement when you push on it as well see i have i have ulna movement i don't have any radius movement uh oh anyway the thing about that is is that if there's force that goes if there's force that actually goes into the hand what ends up happening is is that you're locking we have a tendency to think wow it only happened to my hand but what really happens is, is that the force goes up my two bones here, and what it does is it begins to lock them. And so I can get my radius, my pretty little radius here, I can get my radius stuck and locked because of a force that comes through, or I can get it from overuse, or if I'm, say I lift something, like I really lift something, really, really, really heavy, right? With my hands in that position or one hand in that position, then what happens is, is I have a really good chance of locking something. So you guys can see how the thumb and the elbow can actually be connected and they're connected through that actual movement and ability of the radius to make, to move. You can be locked at the top of the radius, you can be locked at the bottom. But I want to tell you that in most cases, if you're locked at one end, you're usually locked at the other. And it would behoove all the different kinds of therapists that do all the different kinds of modalities. I don't care, chiropractic, PT, massage therapy, an orthopedic, another osteopathic person is, is that you need to have the entire bone having the ability to rotate. Because one of the other ways that you can kind of test, besides just pushing to see if it moves right now, is this, is that if you're stuck in, if your bone is stuck in a direction, I will, see I can't do it because I'm not stuck, per se is that when I rotate, like I can rotate my hand really far one way, but hardly at all the other way. That tells you which way you're stuck. Do you get that, guys? So if I can turn my hand all the way around, I'm just, I'm having to use my shoulder to do it. But if I can turn my hand all the way around and keep going and keep going, and then when I bring it back the other way, it hardly goes into supination, you can see that what's happening is the bone is rotated into one position and it's too stuck to even to have its even amount of rotation in both in both directions. It's supposed to have that rotation in both directions, but it's not having that. So it over rotates one way and under rotates another. These are all clues. These are all clues that you can do yourself or see yourself to know whether you have um, a radius or a radial head that's actually kind of stuck, some part of the radius being stuck. And those are ways that, you know, that's one thing is, is that you don't want to kind of leave stuff like that for too long because it only actually freezes more and more and more as, as you go. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like, if I don't have that corrected, then what happens is down the line, I'm definitely having elbow pain, I'm having wrist pain, I'm having thumb pain, I'm having all these things. So, you know, a lot of therapists start twanging across, there's a, there's a ligament right here that's painful. It's just painful. And twanging across the ligament that's on the thumb doesn't get you anything. It just gets you more pain. So you got to be able to have the movement and the integration that is supposed to happen with my thumb and my radius. 
with my radius and my ulna here at the top so that I don't have elbow pain. With my shoulder and shoulder girdle and the bones and the muscles of the shoulder also put back to right so that there's full movement pattern. And these are the ways, these are the ways in which you get out of having these kind of pain patterns that actually sound kind of simple. It's at my thumb or it's at my here, but it actually tells us a bigger, deeper picture. So I hope that whoever did join me or is watching has if, I, if you have any questions, now would be the time. I hope I covered everything, and I really appreciate you for joining me and for us being together. And I don't know what I'll do next month, but I definitely will let you know. I'll give you a post up on the Facebook page and let you know. Hey, thank you for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you next month. Bye. Oh, hey, 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 before you go, I do want to tell you this, is that on October 24th at the school, the school is at 3331 East 31st Street, October 24th, which is a Saturday. I am doing a live presentation for, you know, about the school and about the way, you know, some of the things I teach. I give examples and so forth, and I tell all about that. So please tell your friend. Please tell your friends. And I hope that some people can join in if you're interested in what my program's about and thinking about doing it. It's a great day for you to come on that Saturday. Maybe I'll talk Jillian into view, uh, videoing it and putting it up live somewhere as well, or at least putting it out on the YouTube channel. Thanks, everybody. I look forward to talking to you. Well, that was nice because there were six people watching, and I got two thank yous.